They allege that the menses are sent by Ahriman, especially when they last beyond the usual time. Therefore a woman, as long as they last, is unclean and possessed of the demon. She must be confined, apart from the faithful, whom her touch would defile, and from the fire, which her very look would injure. She is not allowed to eat as much as she wishes, as the strength she might acquire would accrue to the fiends. Her food is not given to her from hand to hand, but is passed to her from a distance, and a long leaden spoon. They're feeding here from lead. No wonder why I might go mad. Um, the origin of all these notions is in certain physical instincts, in physiological psychology, which is the reason they are found among peoples very far removed from one another by race or religion. But they took in Persia a new meaning as they were a logical part of the whole religious system. I don't know about logical, but... 13. When a, a woman that has just been delivered of a child is also unclean, although it would seem that she ought to be considered pure amongst the pure since life has been increased by her in the world, and she has enlarged the realm of Ormazd, but the strength of old instincts overcame the drift of new principles. Now, Islam differs from this and the Judeo-Christian view in their states of keep away from. But unclean, you know, being a different term um, and different way of dealing with it. Um, you know, the believer is not unclean. You know, perhaps you, you know, get in a dirty state, but, you know, um, but that, that's a complex issue. I'll leave that to the side for now, but, um, only the case when the woman has been delivered of a stillborn child is examined in the Vendidad. She is unclean as having been in contact with the dead creature, she must first drink Gomez to wash over the grave in her womb. And we all know what go uh, the Gomez is, is uh, cow urine. So utterly unclean she is that she is not even allowed to drink water unless she is in danger of death. And even then, as the sacred element has been defiled, she is liable to the penalty of Pashotanu. It, when there is a pregnant woman in the house, one must take care that there be fire continually in it. When the child is brought forth, one must burn a candle, or better still, a fire for three days and three nights, to render the devs and drugs unable to harm the child, for there is a great danger during those three days and nights after the birth of the child. That would be in Siddhar 16. It appears from modern customs that the treatment is the same when the child is born alive, the reason of which is that in any case, during the first three days after delivery, she is in danger of death. A great fire is lighted to keep away the fiends who use them, their utmost efforts, to kill her and her child. She is unclean only because of the, de the death fiend is in her. When the child is being born, one brandishes a sword on the four sides, lest fairy all kill it. 
Pollock, Persian 1, 223. In Rome, three entities that are thought to be gods enter Sidona, Pelumnus, and Devera. Keep her threshold, lest Salvanus come in and harm her. Augustinus de Siv de Six Nine. I don't know what C I V and D. I don't know what that stands for. Um, Fourteen. Logic required that the sick man should be treated as an unclean one, that is, as one possessed. Sickness being sent by Ahraman ought to be cured, like all his other works, by washing and spells. In fact, the medicine of spells was considered the most powerful of all, and although it did not oust the medicine of the lancet and that of drugs, it was more highly esteemed and less mistrusted. The commentator on the Vendidad very sensibly observes that if it does not relieve, it will surely do no harm, which seems not to have been a matter of course with those who heal by the knife and the physic. It appears from the last of our guard that all or at least many diseases might be cured by spells and barashnum washing. It appears from Herodotus and Agathias that contagious diseases required the same treatment as uncleanness. The sick man was excluded from the community of the faithful until cured and cleansed according to the rites. Fifteen. The unclean are confined in a particular place apart from all clean persons and objects. The armestka, which may be described, therefore, as the dokma for the living. And now it's called, uh, now the Armestga is called Dash Tanistan. You may recognize the Stan meaning place. All the unclean, all those struck with temporary death, the man who has touched dead matter, the woman in her menses, are just delivered of child, the leper are the man who has made himself unclean forever by carrying a corpse alone. Stay there all the time, other uncleanliness. Now, the last two, but just, you know, keep away from, you know, they have a break from certain rituals. Um, it's not that they're considered deficient because of that. Um, because it's you know, what they do in their time when they're not in that state. Um, but the other two, like, uh, you know, you can understand that's a contagion, not just, you know, um, 16. Thus far for the general principles, from the diversity of circumstances arises a system of cause out of Kasu history, the development of which may be followed first through the glosses to the Vendidad, in which the labors of several generations of theologians are embodied, and later on through the Rav'a'ets. We will give a few instances of it as found in the Vendidad itself. The process of cleansing varies according to the degree of uncleanliness, and again, the degree of uncleanliness depends on the state of the thing that defiles and the nature of the thing that is defiled. The uncleanliness from the dead is the worst of all, and it is its utmost when...
retracted before the Nasu has been expelled from the corpse by Sogdid. And it can be cured only by means of the most complicated system of cleansing, the Nine Nights Barashnum. Fargrad 9 talks about this. The Barashnum originally meant to remove the uncleanliness from the dead, and it became a general instrument of holiness. Children, when putting on the Kosti, Fargrad 18, 9, perform it to be cleansed from the natural uncleanliness they have contracted in the womb of their mothers. It is good for everyone to perform it once a year. And Now, cleaning. Oh, that's a little picture of a book. I thought maybe there was something on the page. Um, cleaning up, because certain things may rot or whatever, is one thing, but... Um, yeah, the, 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 the whole cleanliness thing has gone too far, what they're saying. Um, if the Nasu has already been expelled from the corpse, as the defiling power was less, a simple washing once, the gosel is enough. Now, you may recognize from other videos I've done, the gosel is the full bath. Um, that's the uh, Arabic term for it. Um, the defiling power of the Nasu reaches farther if the death has just taken place and if the dying creature occupied a higher rank in the scale of beings. For the more recent the victory of the demon are the higher the being he has overcome, the stronger he must have been himself. Menserous women are cleansed by the Gosel. Well, it's a good hygiene practice for to take a good bath when the whole thing's over with. But um, as for things, they are more or less deeply defiled according to their degree of penetrability. Metal vessels, metal vessels can be cleansed. Earthen vessels cannot. Leather is more easily cleansed than woven cloth. Dry wood than softwood, wet matter is a better conductor of uncleanliness than dry matter, and corpses cease to defile after a year. Like, you can notice that if you have allergies or you just don't like the smell or something like, a, like of a dog, um, if a dog just brushes by you, you know, even if you're allergic, you, you can typically just brush off. Um, but if either one of you is wet, then, you know, it's going to have the F you know, the reaction. And even the presence of a wet dog versus a dry dog, it's, um, it can be harder to deal with. Um, Seventeen. In the cases heretofore renew, uh, reviewed, only religious purposes are concerned. There is another order of laws in which Although religion interferes, yet it is not at the root, namely, the laws about contracts and assaults, to which the fourth Fargard is devoted, and which are the only remains extent of the civil and penal legislation of Zoroastrianism. The contracts were divided into two classes according to their mode of being entered into and according to the value of their object, as to the mode they are word contracts or hand contracts. As to their object, they are sheep contracts, ox contracts, man contracts, or field contracts, in which being estimated in money value are contracts to the amount of three, twelve, five hundred, its tiers, and upwards. An is tier, stather, in Greek, is as much as four, Derhems. Drachma in Greek. The dirhem is estimated by modern tradition a little more than a rupee. And a 
don't mean the fact that, that you know, that a rupee is like, what, 40, 50 to a dollar or whatever it is, you know, that's not what's meant, like a certain um, weight that, and I don't know, when this book was read, was the dollar worth a hundred times what it is, so, um, no contract can be made, void by the will of one party alone, he who breaks, a contract is obliged to pay the value of the contract next higher in value. The family and next of kin are, it would seem, answerable for the fulfillment of a contract, a principle of the old Indo-European civil law. 18. Assaults are of seven degrees. Agarepta ava or erista Stroke, sore, wound, bloody wound, broken bone, and manslaughter. The gravity of the guilt does not depend on the gravity of the deed only, but also on its frequency. Each of these seven crimes amounts, by its being repeated, without having been atoned for, to the crime that immediately follows in the scale, so that a uh, a garapta seven times repeated amounts to manslaughter. 19. Every crime makes the guilty man liable for two, two penalties, one here below and another in the next world. The penalty here below consists of a certain number of stripes, which the aspaha astra or the sraosho karana. The general formula is let the priest, probably the sraosha, Fares, remember Sraosha means obedient, you know, after the archangel, strikes so many strokes with the Aspaha Astra, so many strokes with the Sraosho Karana. Astra means in Sanskrit a goad, a goad, so that Aspaha Astra may mean a horse goad, but Aspen. Arja translates it by dura, a thong, which suits the sense better, and agrees with the, etymo the etymology too. An instrument to drive a horse, a whip, astra from the root as to drive. It is aspaha astra, which is referred to by Sozo Menas the second. In 2.13 Imasin Omais Kalepos Altan Eb As An Is An Oi Magoi, you know, the Sra Asha Fares, the As Amenoi Pras. Kuhsai Tan Halian Sraosho Karana is translated by Kabuk, a whip, which agrees with the Sanskrit translation of the C Srosh Karanam Sen Yat. Treber go karma sat tangata es prayas kityam bavate tavan matram. A sin to be punished with three strokes of a whip. It seems to follow that the aspaha, astra, and sra asho karana are one and the same instrument designed with two names, first in reference to its shape, then to its use. Sraosho karana, meaning the instrument for penalty, or the instrument of the sraosha fares, the aspaha astra, is once called astra ma'erya, the astra for the account to be given, that is, for the payment of the penalty. The unit for heavy penalties is 
two hundred stripes, the crime and the criminal, thus punished, are called Pesho Tanu, Artanu Pereta, Parsi. Word for that is Tana Fuhur. The two words literally mean one who pays with his own body and payment with one's body and seems to have originally amounted to worthy of death, worthiness of death, and in effect the word Peshotanu is often interpreted in the Pahlavi commentary by, by Mar Garzan, worthy of death. Isn't there like black magic orders with terms like that? So I guess that's what they mean. But on the whole, it was attached to the technical meaning of one who has to receive 200 strokes with a horsewhip. The lowest penalty in the Vendidad is five stripes, and the degrees from five stripes to Peshutanu are 10, 15, 30, 50, 70, 90, 200, for instance. Agarupta is punished with five stripes, Ava or Arista with ten. Stroke with fifteen, sore wound with thirty, bloody wound with fifty, broken bone with seventy, manslaughter with ninety, a second manslaughter committed without the former being atoned for is punished is punished with the Peshotanu penalty in the same way the six other crimes repeated eight or seven or six or five or four or three times make the committer go through the whole series of penalties up to the Peshu Tanu penalty. 20. If one reviews the different crimes described in the Mendidad and the respective penalties prescribed for them, one cannot but wonder at first sight at the strange inequality between crime and penalty. Bakaria would have felt uncomfortable or reading the Vendidad. It is safer to kill a man than to serve bad food to a shepherd's dog. For the manslaughter gets off with ninety stripes, whereas the bad master is at once a Pashutanu and will receive two hundred stripes. Well, oppression can be worse than murder, that so it makes sense in that regard. Two hundred stripes are awarded if one tills the land in which a corpse has been buried within the year. If a woman just delivered a child, uh, if a woman just delivered of child drinks water, if one suppresses the menses of a woman, well, that makes a lot more sense than that last one. Uh, if one performs a sacrifice in a house where a man has just died, if one neglects fastening the corpse of a dead man so that the birds or dogs may not take dead matter, uh, take dead matter to trees and rivers. 200 stripes. If one throws on the ground a bone of a man's corpse or of a dog's carcass as big as two ribs, 400 if one throws a bone as big as a breastbone, 600 if one throws a skull, 1,000 if it's the whole corpse, 400 stripes if one, being in a state of uncleanliness, touches water or trees, 400 if one covers with a cloth a dead man's feet, 600 if one covers his legs, 800 if the whole body, 500 stripes for killing a whelp, 600 for killing a stray dog, 700 for a house dog, 800 for a shepherd's dog, 1,000 strikes for killing a van, a para dog, 10,000 strikes for killing a water dog. Capital punishment is expressly pronounced only against the false cleanser and the carrier alone, and there are other capital crimes. Um, yet, anyone who bethinks himself of the spirit of the old Aryan legislation will easily conceive that there may be in its eyes many crimes more heinous and to be punished more severely than manslaughter. 
offenses against man injure only one man. Offenses against what people may be treating as gods endanger all mankind. Well, even if it's worse, the you know state shouldn't get involved in everything in that regards, right? Um, no one should wonder. Uh, no one should wonder at the unqualified cleanser being put to death. Who reads? Demosthenes, ne ara, the Persians who defiled the ground by burying a corpse, were not more severely punished than the Greeks were for defiling with corpses the holy ground of Delos, are than the conquerors at Archinousa, nar with the Athenians who put to death Tarpus have much stared at the awful revenge taken for the murder of the sacred dog. There is hardly any prescription in the Vendidad, however. Odd and absurd it may seem, but has its counterpart or its explanation in other Aryan legislations. If we had a Latin or Greek Vendidad, I doubt whether it would look more rational. Well, there's different rationales. It's not the um, 21. Yet, if theoretically the very absurdity of its principles is nothing particular to the Mazdian law, nay, is a proof of its authenticity, it may be doubted whether it could ever have been actually applied in the form stated in the text. It may be doubted whether the murder of a shepherd's dog could have been actually punished with 800 stripes, much more whether the murder of a water dog could have been readily punished, uh, could have been really punished with 10,000 stripes, unless we suppose that human endurance was different in ancient Persia from what it is elsewhere, or even the modern Persia herself. In the time of Chardon, the number of stripes inflicted on the guilty never exceeded 300, and the old German law, 200, and the Hebrew law, 40. And Islamic law, 100 is the limit. Um, but they also determine in Islamic law whether a person is, you know, you know, their health, whether it's broken up into something sm uh, smaller and put in a pile, that sort of thing. Um, so it ends up being 10 or 1 or you know, what, whatever the case is. Um, but, you know, penalties that aren't, aren't meant to kill or, you know. Now, as we see that in modern tradition, bodily punishment is estimated in money value, that is to say, converted into fines, a conversion which is alluded to in the Pahlavi translation. It may readily be admitted that as early as the time of the last edition of the Vendidad, that the conversion had already been made, in the Rava Etz, 200 stripes, or a Tanafuhr, are estimated as equal to 300 Istirs, or 1,200 Dirhams, or 1,350 rubies, uh, rupees. A stripe is therefore about equal to 6 rupees. And later, Parsaism, Every sin and every good deed has its valued money fixed, and may thus be weighed in the scales of Rashnu. If the number of sin, Durhams, outweighs the number of good deed, Durhams, the soul is saved. Herodotus noticed the same principle of compensation in the Persian law of his time. How far that system prevailed in practice, whether the guilty might take advantage of this commutation of his own accord, or only with the assent of the judge, we cannot decide. It is very likely that the riches of the fire temples came for the most part from that source, and that the sound of the dirhams often made the Sa'asho Karana fall from the hands of the Mopids, that the system of financial penalties did not, however, suppress the system of bodily penalties, 
appears from the customs of the Parsis who apply both, and from the Pahlavi commentary, which especially, expressly distinguishes three sorts of atonement, the atonement by money, kvastak, the atonement by the sra osho krana, and the atonement by cleansing. 22. The third element of atonement is strictly religious. It consists in repentance, which is manifested by the avowal of the guilt and by the recital of a formula of repentance, the patet. The performance of the patet has only a religious effect. It saves the sinner from penalties in the other world, but not from those here below. It delivers him before God, but not before man. When the sacrilegious cleanser has repented his sin, he is not the less flayed and beheaded, but his soul is saved. Yet, although it has no efficacy in causing the sin to be remitted, the absence of it has power to cause it to be aggravated. 23. Thus, for the sins that can be atoned for, there are some that are ana paratha inexpiable, which means, as it seems, that they are punished with death here below, and with torments in the other world. Well, perhaps shouldn't the death penalty be part of the atonement here? Um, but certainly the inner repentance would be the thing that counts the most. But um, among the Anna Paretha sins are named the burning of the dead, the burying of the dead, the eating dead matter, matter the unnatural sin, and self-pollution. Although it is not expressly declared that these sins were punished with death, yet we know it of several of them, either from the Greek accounts of them or from Parsi tra tradition. There are also the whole classes of sinners whose life, it would seem, can be taken by anyone who detects them in the act, such as the courtesan, the highwayman, the sodomite, and the corpse burner. 24. Such are the most important principles of the Mazdian law that can be gathered from the Vendidad. These details, incomplete as they are, may give us an idea, if not of the Sassassian practice, at least of the Sassassian ideal that was an ideal which intended to pass into practice, we know from the religious wars against Armenia, and from the fact that very often the superintendent of justice and the highest offices of the state were committed two mopeds. And one of the differences in Islamic law with all this, aside from there not being as many death penalties and certain things being considered very wrong, but not whatever, is that if a person has received their penalty in terms of this world, the criticism ends. Leave it up to God to say whether or not they're condemned or whatnot in the afterlife.